welcome to this special edition of the Africa Infographics channel. Today, we'll be diving into a very controversial topic, the greatest dictator in Africa still in power. From Rwanda to Equatorial Guinea, we've identified 11 leaders who have held on to power for more than 15 years. We'll be evaluating them on four separate key criteria. Number one, the number of years in power, two, the country's nominal GDP, and three, their press freedom index found on the Reporter Without Border website. Four, as an extra data point, I also included the number of coup d'etat they had to endure during their dictatorship. I'll take a closer look at each of these factors and discuss what they mean for the people living under these regimes. At the end, I will give what I called the dictator index. I use this number at the end to determine who is the official greatest African dictator still in power. Get ready for an eye-opening discussion on some of Africa's most controversial leaders. Before we dive in, I got to say, as a young man born and raised in Cameroon, I have seen firsthand the effects of dictatorial rule. So, it's important to acknowledge the sensitivity of this subject. I want to make it clear. The purpose of this video is not to support or condone the actions of these regimes. As we explore this topic, we must acknowledge the impact of these leaders on the lives of millions of people across the continent. The goal of this video is to provide an objective analysis of the longevity, economic impact, and freedom of press in these countries. Let's dive in. Here are all the 11 dictators that qualified. All of them or their families have spent more than 15 years in control of the countries. You might recognize a face or two. I have talked about Kagame and Museveni in my other video. The formula I used to rank the African dictators in this video is pretty simple. First, we added the number of years each dictator has been in power because it's an essential factor in evaluating their impact on their country's economy and society. Next, I added the country's nominal GDP. I did this because, in a way, it really reflects the overall economic output of a nation. Next, I included the World Press Freedom Index from RSF. Here is the definition they have for press freedom. Quote, press freedom is defined as the ability of journalists as individuals and collectives to select, produce, and disseminate news in the public interest independent of political, economic, legal, and social interference, and in the absence of threats to their physical and mental safety. End quote. I like this definition because it measures how free the media is in each country and this gives us an idea on the ability of people to express their discontent. I believe this is crucial for promoting transparency and accountability. For this World Press Freedom Index, the higher you score, the better. 100 is the maximum rate you can have here. I will let the link to their website below. I really recommend you take the time to see where your country scores in this list. Finally, in order to balance this formula, I also subtracted everything we just added to the number of coup d'etat attempts. I did this because it shows how stable each regime is and whether it's facing radical internal oppositions. As a side note, very few of these leaders had to endure coup. That's probably why and how they are still in power today. So the formula takes into account various factors that I considered crucial in assessing the greatness of a dictator and its impact on its country. Let's begin at the bottom of our pyramid, where we will have our first leaders, with a dictator score between 60 and 100. Eritrea, with a dictator score of 54.02. Isaiah Safwerki is the 77 years old president of Eritrea. He has been in power since 1991, when the country gained independence from Ethiopia. His ascent to power was a result of a successful armed struggle but this victory did not bring about the democracy and freedom that many had hoped for. Eritrea's GDP is estimated to be around $2.4 billion, making it one of the poorest countries in the region. To add to this, Eritrea has the second worst press freedom score in the whole world. They are just slightly better than North Korea, with a score of only 19.62. The impact of this must be felt in daily life, with limited access to information and freedom of expression. Despite all of this, no coup attempts have been made on Afwerki's regime, allowing him to maintain his hold on power for over 30 years. Using our formula, 
Isaias Afwerki finished with a dictator score of 54.02. South Sudan with a dictator score of 69.06. Salva Kiir Mayardit is the 71 years old president of South Sudan. He is the second dictator on our list. Mayardit has been the president of South Sudan since 2005. His ascent to power was fueled by his leadership during the country's civil war, which ultimately led to the independence of South Sudan in 2011. The country's GDP stands at $4 billion. This is comparatively low in the region. However, being a young country, it is still in the process of building its economy. On the Press Freedom Index, South Sudan scores 47.06 out of 100, placing it at 128th in the world. Just ahead of democratic countries like Nigeria and Mexico, no coups have been attempted on his regime. Salva Kiir Mayardit finished with a dictator score of 69.06, placing him in the last tier of our pyramid. Rwanda with a dictator score of 80.28. Paul Kagame is 65 years old. He is a former Rwandan military leader who assumed power in the aftermath of the 1994 genocide. This human tragedy killed an estimated 800,000 Rwandans. But since then, he has been at the helm of the country's politics, officially becoming president in 2000. Rwanda's GDP of $12.1 billion puts it way ahead of some African countries of similar size. The country has made strides in technology and innovation with initiatives such as Smart Africa that aims to transform the continent into a knowledge-based economy. However, Rwanda has been criticized for its record on press freedom, with a score of 45.18 on the index. Despite this, Kagame's regime has not faced any coup attempts, and he finished with a dictator score of 80.28. Djibouti, with a dictator score of 63.45. Ismail Omar Gwela is 75 years old. He is the current president of Djibouti. Mr. Gela has been in power since 1999, succeeding his uncle, Hassan Gould Abtadan, to take control of the small country. Djibouti is a tiny country in the Horn of Africa with a GDP of $3.7 billion. It is strategically located near the entrance to the Red Sea, making it an important shipping hub for goods coming from Asia and Europe. Despite its small size, Djibouti has a strategic importance that goes beyond its borders. However, the country is also known for its challenges with human rights and freedom of the press, with a press score of 35.75 out of 100. There have been no coup attempts on Guela's regime. His dictator score is 63.45. Congo, with a dictator score of 98.67, Denis Sassou Nguesso is the 79 years old president of Congo. His story of ascension to power is full of twists and turns. He first came to power in 1979 through a military coup, but was later overthrown in 1992 after a multi-party system was introduced in the country. However, in 1997, he returned to power through another military coup. Mr. Nguesso has been ruling the Republic of Congo ever since. Despite a GDP of $14 billion, the country faces economic challenges due to its extreme reliance on oil exports. The country has a relatively decent press freedom score of 58.67, ranked as 93rd in the world. Dennis seems to know a thing or two about coup, so there is no coincidence no coup has been attempted on his regime. With a dictator score of 98.67, Denis Sassou Nguesso is the highest ranking dictator of the bottom tier of our pyramid. At the mid-tier of our pyramid, we will have dictators with a score between 100 to 130. Chad, with a dictator score of 101.2. Muhammad Debbie, at the young age of 39 years old, is the youngest dictator in our list. He is also the newest addition to our list, having been in power since 2021. How does he qualify to the list, you might ask? Well, it's a family thing. The second family affair to make the cut. As I mentioned earlier, I decided to count the cumulative years of families that stays in power. Mohamed Debi took over the presidency in 2021 following the death of his father, Idris Debi. Together, they have been ruling Chad for 33 years. Chad has a GDP of $12 billion, which is okay when compared to other countries in the region. However, the country's press freedom score is 56.18, indicating limited but not the worst freedom of speech. Togo, with a dictator score of 121.2. Farah Nasingbi is 56 years old. 
His ascent to power in Togo is a classic example of a family affair. After the sudden death of his father, Nassim B. Iyadima, in 2005, his son, Fora, was then serving as Minister of Telecommunications. This technicality didn't stop him. He was installed as the new president of Togo, despite the constitution stating that the Speaker of the Parliament should take over in case of a vacancy of power. This move was widely condemned by the international community as a coup d'etat disguised as a constitutional process. The country's GDP of 8 billion puts it among the poorest in our list and its press score of 57.17. This is the second best among the dictators we have discussed so far. Despite all this, no coup has been attempted on his regime. His family's long-standing reign has continued for 56 years and has earned him a dictator score of 121.2, Equatorial Guinea, with a dictator score of 103. Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo is the 80 years old current president of Equatorial Guinea. Mbasogo has been in power since 1979, making him the longest standing dictator on our list. This long lasting dictator ended up with an incredible 44 years in power. His ascent to power came through a military coup against his own uncle, Francisco Macias Nguema, who was executed. For this reason, I will not count them as a united family in power. Equatorial Guinea has a GDP of $16 billion, making it one of the richer countries in the region. However, the country's press score is at 43.96, which is one of the lowest in the world. In 2004, a coup was attempted on his regime, known as the Wanga coup, but it failed to overthrow him. To conclude, Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo has a dictator score of 103. We have finally reached the top of our pyramid. The three dictators left have a very, very similar score. All are above 130 in our index. Let's get to know these power masters a little better. Gabon, with a dictator score of 133. Ali Bongo Andimba is 64 years old and became president of Gabon in 2009, succeeding his father, Omar Bongo, who had ruled the country for 42 years. The Bongo family has been ruling Gabon for a total of 56 years. Ali Bongo's ascension to power was extremely controversial, as he was accused of rigging the election and actually faced widespread protests. However, he managed to hold on to power and has been president ever since. Gabon has a GDP of $22 billion, the third best in our list, but it still faces issues with corruption and income inequality. The country has a press score of 56, which is among the highest in our list. In 2019, a coup was attempted against Ali Bongo's regime, but it ultimately failed. Despite this, Ali Bongo finished with a dictator score of 133 making him one of the greatest leaders on our list. Uganda, with a dictator score of 131.4. Yoweri Museveni is 78 years old and his ascent to power is an interesting story. He came to power in 1986 after leading a successful guerrilla war against the government of Milton Obote. Interestingly, one of the people who helped him in that war was none other than our previous dictator, Paul Kagame. If you want to learn more about this conflict, Make sure to check my other video on this subject. After coming to power, Museveni was initially hailed as a hero, but over the years he has become increasingly authoritarian. Uganda has a GDP of $48 billion, which is the best in our list. This makes it an economic powerhouse in the region. However, its press score of 46.35 is relatively low. Unlike many other African leaders, no coup has been tried on his regime. However, Museveni has been accused of suppressing opposition voices. All of this has contributed to his dictator score of 131.4, ending as the third greatest dictator in Africa still in power. Cameroon, with a dictator score of 133.1. Paul Bia, the 90 years old dinosaur. <laughs> sorry, president of Cameroon. Mr. Bia became president of Cameroon in 1982 after serving as prime minister for seven long years. He assumed office following the resignation of President Amadou Ahidjo. Ahidjo had a strained relationship with Bia, and the latter quickly consolidated his power, taking control of the country's political and economic systems. As I said earlier in this video, I am from Cameroon, so this is personal to me. The country has a GDP of $44 billion, making it the second best in our list. However, the country is plagued by corruption and inequality. In 1984, a coup attempt was made on Bia's regime, which failed. 
This attempt had a profound effect on him, and since then he has become increasingly reclusive, rarely appearing in public or giving interviews. Despite this, he has managed to maintain control of the country for over four decades, surviving numerous challenges to his rule, including protests, strikes, and political opposition. He has been accused of silencing opposition voices and cracking down on dissent, including by shutting down the internet during protests. Cameroon has a press score of 49.1. Paul Bia is the top dictator in our list. With a dictator score of 133.1, his 40-year reign has been marked by a tight grip on power and accusations of human rights abuses. We are at the end of this video. In conclusion, we have explored the top African dictators who have managed to stay in power for decades. Through their various ascensions to power, coups, and family affairs, we have seen how they have managed to maintain their grip on power in their respective countries. We learned that the best economy on the list is Uganda, with a GDP of $48 billion, while the worst is Eritrea, with a GDP of only $2.4 billion. The dictator who has spent the most time in power is Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo of Equatorial Guinea, with 44 years of continuous rule. As for press freedom, the best country on the list is Congo. In summary, we have seen how these African dictators have used various means to maintain their power, including family dynasties, coups, and suppression of press freedom. While some have been ousted from power, others continue to hold on to their grip on power. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content.